Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where I'm taking a look at, well, <laughs> they're not that new anymore, because it's taken me a while to get around to it, but live on Twitch, I am having a look at the new French hulls. And first up is the ironclad hull for France, available up to, well, it says on here 1906, but I think it's actually 1905 that it tops out at. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise you're into dreadnoughts, and uh, yeah, here's one I did did uh, muck about with, but we'll uh, we'll not we'll we'll look at the ironclad one first. So this is the ironclad. So you've got the one, the two, and the three. They are pretty much the same, uh, except that the two and the three are slightly bigger, and they get these extra cutouts. So, but otherwise they're very much much of a muchness. They have the same same tower options. Um, so let's have a look at the three. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, and uh, everything is going off in Twitch. Uh, it's already a, it's that level four hype train, which is insane. Thank you all so, so much. I know. Tumble home. It's brilliant. Uh, and there's quite a lot you can do with these. But in terms of the towers, they're all pretty cheap. Um, any base accuracy you can get, though, is usually worth it. Uh, so I'm going to go for the top end towers. And you, you can move these around more than you would maybe expect. Um, you get quite a surprising amount of freedom for a pre-dreadnought. Um... You don't think the hull can do Q turrets? I probably can. It does have a ram bow, as Chan is noticing, or a, a point. It definitely very pointy. <laughs> oh, dearie me! Right um, now, this is the best tech you could possibly get for this ship, but it's stuck stuck on Steam multiple expansion engines. Um, so let's have a look. Twenty five smoke. Now, I've noticed that the smoke interference values on the funnels don't really match up with what you uh, get when you put them down. Yeah, you are getting smoke interference with this thing. <laughs> even, even with <laughs> a single funnel. Okay, so you're definitely going to want to uh, induce that. Oh my goodness, John Craig. Even more gift subs. Five. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, so this is the biggest... Uh, biggest one. This is the biggest ironclad hull. That is, yeah. <laughs> you might want to go with <laughs> with a smaller version of this because <laughs> the big ones are not going to go very fast at all. Um, yeah, eighteen knots, which I guess you know pre dreadnought and all the rest of it. Still, that's. Uh, Pretty rubbish. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, well, uh, we'll get the rest of it built. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gallant. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the chat. Thank you very much for joining in the channel. And 100 bits for come from Cumbrian. Thank you very, very much. The biggest hotels on the sea, I know. <laughs> right. Um, Gun-wise, uh, probably 11s, to be honest. I know you can try and fit a 13-inch gun on here, and it is quite funny, but um, the uh, <laughs> the 11 Mark III is actually going to be able to hit something, and hmm, it's gonna it's gonna completely screw up the balance. But I reckon you could get a Q turret on here. If you try hard enough, yeah, you can. There you go. So if you do want to mount it with a Q turret, <laughs> you can. <laughs> uh, beware the full weight offset. That's pretty funny. Uh, I, I'm not going to do that, though. Just because these ships are hard enough to balance out, as it is. Um, secondary guns. Can you fit an 8-inch... 
duel in. You can. Loads of them. Damn. Uh, you don't want to there, though, because they kind of get in the way. So, what's the next? What about a six inch? Really? It doesn't let you put a six inch there. What about there? I uh, see a six inch doesn't get in the way. So, this can fire over the top of the. I wouldn't want to be in that six inch gun. But uh, that lets you fire over the top of them. That's. <coughs> pretty neat. Is that not a gun mount? Is that actually just for boats? Because that's hilarious if true, France. Oh, you can fit a single two-inch gun. <laughs> of course. Perfectly sensible. Uh, and then you can put guns on top of your guns and uh, shove guns in other places where you wouldn't normally expect there to be a gun. Is why not? Uh, casements? Can you surprise people? A couple of casement guns you can. Wow. Torpedo launchers? Goodness me. Look at this thing. <coughs> Absolutely bristling with weapons. Thank you for the hydrate. I know. Guns hanging off the side. Guns everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so, if, if you haven't been into a <laughs> whole showcase before, if you're live on Twitch, um, then uh, I do try and kind of just show off what the whole can do, um, rather than trying to do anything too nuts with it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll fill out the rest of the ship and try and balance it. We've got... Uh, We've got a reasonable um, amount of weight left. But uh, once we get into uh, all this stuff, it's probably going to be pretty rubbish. Oh, God. This is just a terrible choice. I go for white, white powder, TNT, I guess. Thing 3% flash by chance? Yikes. That's with the standard chills. Go. <coughs> Big torpedoes. Uh, standard. It's not bad, actually. Still have some... Uh, some weight to throw around. Which is... Pretty nice. You don't... No. You don't normally get that with these types of ships. Can even armor this up quite well, possibly. Goodness me. Look at that. Now we do have a four weight offset, uh, which I'm now going to attempt to fix by moving the funnel around. <laughs> Sometimes balancing on ships just makes no sense. Yet. It's mainly the tower. And then we can finish it off with the funnel. Not the prettiest ship I've ever built. I will confess. <laughs> uh, is it possible to do it with a... It's the funnel being in a weird place. Can please have a central funnel. I'll, I'll move the tower back to do it. L just... Please. There we go. That's a bit better. Oh, maybe if I... Uh... Yeah, I could shift the gun back to here. And I have an aft weight offset, which I can fix by armouring up the prow. Which, of course, makes perfect sense, because we have... Uh, an armoured bow. There we go. Slight four weight offset, 0.1%. Might be able to offset that. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, I want to actually move this. Now, I think I'm pretty happy with that. 
0.2 weight offset. I can uh, keep increasing my armors though. Do something like that. Lovely. Napoleon would be pleased. <laughs> Toggle the shield for the two inch guns. Yeah, that might be interesting. I don't know. I, I love the ang angers on the front and everything. Look at it. Look at it. Reminds me of kind of the, those um, Soviet missile trains, in a way, the front of it. I, 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 <laughs> there's something about it. Sure. Why not? Um, I can, of course, design the enemy ships, which is. Uh, <clears throat> A potential thing, but um, I will. Uh, I'll just let the AI do its thing, which is what we normally do when we test hulls. Um, and I'll try and catch up with the Twitch chat. You're going very quick this evening, Jules Fern. <laughs> yeah, it does. So this is very, very kind of normal way of building it. Oh, what the hell did I set the range at? I set it at something stupid, didn't I? Hold on. Let's uh, leave the battle and reduce the range. <laughs> I'm not I'm not waiting all that time. It's because it's set up uh, normally. Um, thank goodness for saves. Because uh, you can now fix that without spending a million years for having to rebuild your ship. Roman boarding bridge. Yeah, or the little towers. <laughs> there we go. I don't know, there's... I don't know, what a nice little thing. I mean, it's not that much, but it's an 11, nearly 12,000 ton. <clears throat> For a free dreadnought, not too shabby. Have a American ship closing in. We can't hit anything. <laughs> <laughs> Disgustingly beautiful. Thank you. Captain Norfolk does not have torpedoes, so I'm just too worried about that. On the cruiser. this. Tunnel has been shot off, which is really annoying because I uh, got to get a, <laughs> to get a shot of it <laughs> for, the, for the thumbnail. I can't really tell them that. <laughs> oh dear. That's a fast armored cruiser. If that is able to hit anything at all, ever, I will be shot. You have a destroyer. Threatening us. Which you can do with being sunk. Oh, lovely. Just fine torpedo. My cruiser also has torpedoes. Good. Wow, all those torpedoes from a single destroyer in 1986. Fire. Ow. Harsh. And the AI loves its torpedoes. God damn it. Mind you, holding up surprisingly well. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, um, Automod speaks French, 
but uh, <laughs> males. <laughs> you know what? Just go just fire a torpedo. Light cruiser. Fire one at the heavy cruiser. I'm feeling vindictive because we're stuck. We're <laughs> going nowhere. See, now I can design the enemy fleet. It is tempting to uh, to do this, but of course, this is this is a vulnerability of the pre dreadnought. You get torpedo, and then you're stuffed. No one could arrange in. Not the most interesting battle to watch, though. So I'm going to uh, restart the battle. <laughs> Listing a smidge, yeah. Just because it's not very interesting uh, to watch me uh, completely fail like that. Um, it's not a really a fair negation of the ship. Don't let it get torpedoed <laughs> by small ships. Been, uh, I've been playing far too much late game 1940 stuff. I'm used to a battleship being able to just eliminate small ships rather than that. Struggling to uh, take out the destroyer. Uh, if you set your guns too aggressive, they start shooting everyone. Uh, well, hmm. so what it mainly does is sometimes your ships will go, nah, we might as well not shoot because we probably won't hit. If you put it too aggressive, then they'll just shoot it anyway. Uh, it doesn't mean that it'll shoot at more targets or anything like that. It just uh, makes them shoot as soon as the guns are reloaded, basically. Um, normal is most of the time fine. If you put it on save, then they'll try and actually line up the shot <laughs> properly before shooting. Right, let's try and take out that irritating little torpedo boat. Ah, thanks everyone. So, normal is 1%, chance to hit, save is 5. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, it's the light cruiser. Well, it still needs to die. What's your range on your torpedoes? Enormous. Probably means there's already one headed towards me. Good hit. 11 inch guns. We actually have a reasonable accuracy. I mean, 29% is uh, pretty good for the pre dreadnought era. Oregon also has torpedoes, which is. Again, I, I probably should just go in and design the enemy ships and just ban them from using those torpedoes, but. I mean, I did show what happens when you uh, make a mistake and uh, charge in. Still, though, doing all right. Don't forget the thumbnail. Thank you. <laughs> well, I can get it from the other video, uh, or the other half. But, uh, yeah, you can get one with the uh, funnel not burnt, which is nice. Torpedoes do go through this little phase towards, particularly towards the end of the pre-dreadnought era where they are, well, pretty much, actually, like, uh, torpedoes in the pre-dreadnought era are the premier weapon. Um, they start to lose their usefulness later on. But, um, yeah, I, uh, still have some issues with torpedoes in the game, but I, know. <laughs> I don't think uh, it's quite time for another torpedo rant. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
it's the AI. The AI loves putting torpedoes on things. It will just put torpedoes on everything, always, at all times. For all reasons. Um Chase with the Oregon, which is not great for us because they're faster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're talking about bad torpedoes, <laughs> they appear. <laughs> yep, there they are. That's the. Uh, <laughs> Anything to add to the torpedoes and explode them. This, so now we can blow in on it. Or try to. I don't know where their other ship went. Oh, there it is. The Delaware. Even slower than us. Now. Does Delaware have torpedoes? No. Goodness me. Don't have any means of detecting. Uh, torpedoes. No. Try about if we don't. I don't know. Um, uh, coming. Um, I think that would add a. Uh, adding a, a World of War, a World of Warships style aiming mech um, would add a huge amount of micro. It might be nice for torpedoes. Um, yeah, I, I can see that being useful. I mean, sometimes the AI just shoots them in an incredibly stupid manner, but um, you know, I, I have seen my own ships use AI ships. torpedoes in a sensible manner. I'd say they're probably pretty balanced from the player's point of view. Uh, where it's not balanced is how the enemy AI avoids and uses torpedoes. Um, that, that's just my thoughts on it, basically. So... It's a bit of finessing. I don't. I don't think there's a massive, you know, fundamental problem. I think it's tweaking at the stage. Um, you know, I, I've said it before. <coughs> I'd like to see torpedoes with slightly less. Not so much range. I think they are actually historical values. Um, <laughs> but um, the ships shooting them at much, much shorter ranges because the, the air, particularly late game, just loves just sending out waves of torpedoes at maximum range and they. You know, it's um, you know, ultimate admiral torpedoes are perfect. You know, historical torpedoes were not; uh, they would go off course and all sorts of things. Um, particularly the earlier ones. So I'd like to see the ranges less, um, and uh, but I'd like to see the detection range less, so the AI finds it harder to avoid. Um, And uh, yeah, I, I, there's a really good idea actually on one of the um, comments on one of my videos today on YouTube, which was uh, crew. So crew training level should have an impact on the ability to avoid torpedoes. And I, I've said before there should be a delay for the AI between detecting a torpedo and 
avoiding it, or at least like the AI realizing the perfect path it needs to take to avoid the torpedo. And I think if you had that linked to the crew system, that would be very cool. Uh, what are bits? Uh, bits are money. <laughs> it's it's the it's the rough equivalent of uh, throwing copper coins at me, <laughs> which I appreciate very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think you're right, Kobe. I, I think uh, Kobe. Um, the I think the uh, you know devs are working on the campaign. Campaign balance comes first. Um, adding in other nations, stuff like that. But uh, th I think this has been, uh, you know, has been in the game long enough that I, th I just think maybe, or to be honest, the other way you could do it is is to tweak the AI um, building process so that, for instance, it, it doesn't like to use deck torpedo launches. Now, I'm not in favour of arbitrary kind of things like that. Um, so what I would do is I would I would have the deck launches be really easy to blow up. So if you have a torpedo launcher sitting on the deck and you fling a bunch of HG at it or near it <laughs> then torpedo launch just stops working. Which is a real issue that ships had. Um, that if they if they got shot at, then the torpedo launches were easily taken out, and torpedoes not necessarily exploding or anything like that, but but take taking like they wouldn't work because they got a hole in them. Um, oh, <laughs> Melanus, this is your that was your comment. This is a genius comment. It's a really good idea to uh, to limit how. Uh, how good the AI is at avoiding torpedo. Because, of course, it would work for your own ships as well um, when they were under AI control or on the uh, avoid torpedoes order. And now the AI is just running away from me. Well, I think the fact that they are just running away from me shows the power of the Enclable. Um, <laughs> I've got to end the video here. And they're going to the other French pre dreadnought hull. And uh, for those of you on YouTube, you can see that tomorrow. Right now. <laughs>